if I wrote Dune and then I watched this movie. I would take my name off the book. A book by Alan Smithy. I think, thankfully, Frank Hebert was dead by the time this movie came out. How long is Dune? Um, it's probably like a few hundred feet, depending on the Dune. Is uh, it? Is it that? Is it? Are you sure? Have you guys seen any David Lynch movie? Yes. Um, I have not. What have you seen? I have to look at a couple. Of I need to look up his movies, but I've definitely seen one. The known universe is ruled by the Padishah Emperor Shaddam. The so instead of an opening crawl, which is text, it's an opening crawl, which is someone telling us what it is. Show don't tell, right? Tell don't tell. Tell don't tell. Why does she keep fading out if she's not done talking? I forgot to tell you. Uh, is that why you're fading back in? So I was thinking of David Fincher. I was also thinking of David Fincher. I've seen a lot of David Fincher movies. Two of David Fincher films are in my top ten of all time. I'm glad that our collective introduction to David Lynch is something that he disowns. <laughs> the music was made by Toto? Yeah. Hell yeah. I really hope it's good, but I know it's not going to be good. Well, what if it's good? It's not. I'll bless the rains down in Arrakis. That's the Reverend Mother? She looks like shit. I would also like to context this movie. Seven years post-Star Wars. So it's not like they had an excuse. I should also mention, if it isn't obvious to the audience, I'm the only one who's read the book. It's throwing a lot at you really early. Yeah, this, a lot of information's more slowly trickled out over the first third of the book. So far, we have information about, like, almost ten planets. We have all these different houses. Only one, or really two, is important right now. And we have so much going on. Like, movies don't really do that because they're not relevant to the two-hour runtime. What the fuck is Paul wearing? Holy shit! He's so young! Look at him! Whoa, still... Look at that guy's eyebrow! <laughs> Hold on! Patrick Stewart, take a back seat! What the fuck is that? I know, Thufer. I'm sitting with my back to the door. That's Thufer? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I feel like I'm, like, aimlessly drifting through space. Oh my god! <laughs> ah! Why are they polygons? I can't even describe. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Why is this a tactic? They're supposed to envelop the body, not turn you into a Minecraft character. Okay. What's the point of shields that you can just step into? That doesn't stop anything. Oh. He just walked into that guy's shield. Oh my god. Shields only reflect oh. uh, fast moving things. Then what's the point of the shield? It reflects bullets. Oh. Have a shield that works. Have like a regular shield. Have a that'd be more <laughs> effective. It would stop fast and slow moving things. All right, can I say something real quick? The second these three walked in, the whole tone of the movie was set for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Patrick Stewart. I'm like, oh yeah. And then, th whatever the fuck that guy's eyebrows are, I lost my mind. And then all of a sudden they turn into Roblox Minecraft. The bird of House Atreides, and it's stitched in yellow on black. Sure. House Atreides colors. Green and black. Mud, I don't give a shit about that criticism. <laughs> they just polygon fought. I noticed nobody would respect a fucking Mentat if they looked like that <laughs> fucking half Chewbacca fucking... Do you think that David Lynch put this movie together, saw the first VFX of the polygons, was like, all right, I'm out. I'm done. I'm, I'm still crying. I'm not stopped. I haven't stopped. Why? <laughs> I have not stopped. I'm like, so... my eyes are leaking. I'm so sad. <laughs> I think this movie's perfect in every way. <laughs> this might be my favorite movie of all time. Why is he so sweaty? <laughs> you don't just sweat bullets while you sleep? No. You can't sweat bullets. The shields will block them. Wow, they've really just rearranged. This is the first chapter of the book. Well, you only got two hours and 16 minutes. So you put, like, chapters three to six, then chapter one. Also an additional scene with the Emperor that makes no fucking sense. I bet the shield fight was in the book. It was. Nice. It's in the trailer to the new movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You know, this movie just throws a curveball every five seconds. Is it mind control or is he just like not wanting to it's do it? It's suggestion. Okay. Mild mind control? Mild mind control, yeah. Again, the book takes the first third to slowly establish the world and explain how people work and what they do. I can give the movie a compliment. The set design's fucking cool. It is. It's very cool. What the fuck? Ugh. What the fuck? Ah! What the fuck? I dislike all of this. Is that a reverse mohawk on purpose? Why have they made the Baron so disgusting? I think the movie's making this change in order to make him... Less sympathetic to us. He's not sympathetic in the books. He's a pedophile. What oh, the God. What is he doing? He also never does that. 
have we seen Princess Irulan yet? I think that was the girl talking at the beginning. Okay. So in 2016, that actress said she was signed for three movies because the producers thought they were going to make, quote unquote, Star Wars for grownups. <laughs> Is that what they thought this was? I'll say this. It's a really expensive turd. Like, it cost a lot of money and a lot of time and effort to build this turd. Just amazing how you can throw a fuck ton of money at a problem and it won't be solved. This might explain some of the out-of-order chapter adaptations, actually. The rough cut, without post, was over four hours long. Lynch intended for a movie that was almost three hours. So two and a half -ish. And this is a barely over two. Universal and everyone involved wanted a two-hour cut, so... They had to cut so many scenes and refilm new simplified scenes that bridged gaps in reshoots. That new introduction that she voiced in the beginning, the one that I just talked about, she was added in to talk about the exposition so I could cut all the exposition scenes. That's why it's so rushed. They gave all this information, and then during shit like this, there's nothing. When David Lynch signed on to direct this, he got other offers to do other movies, including Return of the Jedi. I'd rather direct Dune because I'd probably fuck up Return of the Jedi. I'd rather direct Dune. I want to see if I can I make it make good. Dune good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would see if I can do it good. I'd make Dune ev infinitely worse. Than the <laughs> On purpose. More polygon fights. <laughs> oh, yeah. You already know. Imagine if Dune was just eyebrows and polygon fights. Star Wars for adults, huh? Oh, yeah. I feel really mature watching polygons. You know what my favorite thing about that is? Max von Sydow's in a Star Wars movie. If I ever think of a movie made for adults, it's 1984's Dune. <laughs> <laughs> One of my criticisms of the book, um, I really enjoyed it. Let me preface with that. I think it's very well written. But it has some of the worst pacing I have ever seen in a novel. And that is very much translating into the film. I mean, you can't even say that carried over because they kept, according to you, rearranging the chapters in which it's adapted. It's somehow worse. They took an already poorly paced book and gave it worse pacing. There's just a dog. Hundreds of years later, dogs have not evolved. They look exactly the same as today. Can you imagine three of these Dune movies? These, specifically. No. That's what everyone was signed on for. Can you imagine one of these? <laughs> Barely. Dude, Alan Smithy sucks. Yeah, I think he's a terrible director. What else has Alan Smithy directed? Nothing! <laughs> really? Well, no, that name has been used for a long time in Hollywood for people who leave projects. So only movies where the director didn't like it. So therefore, Alan Smithy's never made a good film. Technically, yeah. Oh, ah! my God. Oh, no. The second moon. Is he talking telepathically to someone? It's just his inner thoughts. It's not even... Okay. It's just to the audience. Mm hmm I swear to God, every stupid book adaptation has way too much narration. Do one of my favorite scenes in the book is Paul just losing his shit. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be the last scene. Where he says, oh my gosh, because I have... have I'm such a freak. I have You've... mental powers because of the spice, but also your teachings. Yeah. Wow. And he loses his mind because he's like, what the fuck is happening to me? He seemed pretty chill about it. Yep. <laughs> he seemed relatively okay. <laughs> it's like two and a half pages of Paul just flipping shit at it, his mother. It's like he reacted to like... A flat tire, but he's already home. He's like, oh, no. Well, that kind of sucks. I got to get that fixed. It's a thumper. It attracts sandworms. Ooh, the worm. This better be good. This is like the one thing from Dune people know. You know, this scene has the potential of being really good. Yep. Starting. Over an hour in. Yep. We're starting. <laughs> starting. The worms look great. It does look pretty good. If nothing else in your Dune movie, you got to get the worm right. The worm is iconic to the story. It's like Darth Vader for Star Wars. It, that's so good. I like that. That's good. I can give the movie one point of credit. Uh, the one point of credit I'll give this movie is I like its worms compared to the 2020 worms. Um, I like the 2020 worm a lot, though. It looks good, but I like the three prongs. That's more iconic. Fair, but I like how massive the new one is. I am Chani. He's going to fuck her. Yes. What? Wow. Wow. Ian, it's like it's a man and a woman on screen. <laughs> How could you possibly have figured that out? Honestly, it's like I wrote the movie. It's Sean Young. And we all know how talented of a movie writer Ian Mello is. I've already admitted I'd make this movie infinitely worse. Basically cut out the entire middle section of the book. You know, that's happened with a lot of really long adaptations. They speed run the start, cut out the middle, and speed run the end. Harry Potter 6. Fuck yeah, Harry Potter 6. Because it's the worst one. 
Uh, best book, worst movie. Sorry. Maybe not the worst movie, but it's what's worse. Um, because seventh it's... part one's kind of boring. Seventh part one's good. You're wrong. It's just set up. You know what movie I miss? Any other movie? Is that the restaurant from Spaceballs? I mean, it makes sense that he'd have a floaty machine since he's so Why fat. In the books, he has suspensors that lift his fat up to make him weigh like fifty pounds. Really? Yeah. That's even funnier. First of all, Sting is 69. Nice. 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 He also put himself into Guitar Hero World Tour as a playable character. I remember that. I played Sting. What? Fuck time. They have no chemistry. Have they had scenes? No. They're a man and a woman. Hold on. Let's recap all their scenes. They met. Now they're kissing. They watched and... his mom give birth. Okay. Very romantic. And now they're kissing. To be fair, in the book, also just kind of happens. But... Paul is, like, low-key a psychic, and he almost every night dreams of the future of him and Chani together. The worm's only in, like, a scene. Yeah, wait, is it coming back? I'm not going to say a damn word. Well, he's got a, a tub thumping by Chumbawamba on his shoulder, so I'm pretty excited. Down. It's called a big one. Again. Whoa, it's the big one. It's called Switch. Let's get it going. It's that hot new thing. Hey! Oh my god, it's so big. There's a lot going on in this scene. Yeah, there's a whole chapter explaining how you ride a worm. But, you know, in the movie, just... All right, jump on the worm. In the two standard years that followed. Oh my god, you're not going to show the two standing years that followed? There's 20 minutes left. What? I'd rather see it stuff in there instead of a quick montage with more narration and more exposition. You have no need of your weapons with me, Gurney Halleck. Oh! Gurney Halleck just disappears in the fucking movie, and he just finds him again two years later? In the books, Gurney Halleck is a POV character, and we see what he does. He becomes a fucking smuggler on Dune, fighting against the Harkonnens, not knowing that Paul is alive and is brought to tears when they're reunited. Look, he looks like he's about to cry. Behind what wall of sand is he crying? Oh, it's over. Hard cut to sex. Post sex. Wow, I really like watching their relationship happen. They and met. It's over. So Paul is visioning with the force powers plus the spice together. He's visioning he, the royalty family. He's like super mega ultra the one. This Paul kind of moseys from scene to scene. I'm not getting a sense of his character other than I'm supposed to be this sometimes. I'm gonna walk here. Here, drink this blue Gatorade. It has electrolytes. What? So the worms came to him? What? But they're not attacking him. What? This sucks. He drank the water. What? So the worms like him. What? And he's bleeding, crying. Oh, he's Lachir. Paul drinking it brings the worms to them peacefully, but also hurts every one of their species. Yeah, that, 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 uh, no. <laughs> Incorrect. There's so much happening, but at the same time, there's- There's nothing happening. There's not a lot happening. There is too much and nothing simultaneously. Paul. I am Dune. I have to be the Dune. God, I didn't even remember Chris Knives. Yep, they're not in this movie either. Why would they be? The Toto music in the background. It's so unfitting. Yeah, they were it's so good. I'm sorry. I love Toto the band. I love the rains down in Africa. They were the wrong fucking choice to score this movie. On Arrakis, it's desert power. Oh, you're fucking mentioning desert power with 15 minutes left. Desert power. It's a concept. Again, the book isn't without its faults. The movie is amplifying the worst parts of the book, which are its pacing and its excessive use of internal monologue. Do the worms have shields? No. no. Then why do the bullets explode midair? Not bullets, the lasers. They're not exploding in midair. They're hitting the worm. That's supposed to be hitting the worm? Yeah. Yikes. Why are they rotating? How does that help them? Oh my god, it's like this movie doesn't know what it's doing. They established shields and they only use them twice. He uh, falls into the sandworm? That did not happen in the book. How would he though? Yeah, right? So the fight's over? So The he's dog just... is still here. Yeah, of course. Why would Where the be? fuck did the dog go? <laughs> to those who stand against the righteous. The righteous! Oh, it's the first word sting has said all film. This is a Harkonnen animal. Let me, please, my lord. Do you think Patrick Stewart is familiar with what movie he's in? This is Star Trek, right? I was on so much cocaine. <laughs> they don't have their shields, right? No shields. So in theory, you could just pull a gun on him if you had a gun. They don't have guns. I feel like 
guns are still useful in this day and age when people oh, don't yeah. have shields. You know what would make me la make me happier if the guys playing the drums started playing the drums to a Sting song. Or a Toto song. Toto featuring Sting. Sting runs out of the fight and plays guitar in the background. I bless the rains down in rocks. So this is the climax. Two guys with one knife each. Yep. It feels Just terrible. like in the book. Kind of boring. Because Sting's character wasn't really established as... Like, he didn't speak until just now. Nope. Yeah. He I mean, he not. was evil. Sure, I get that. But he wasn't really like a force to be like reckoned with. At this point, a thing this does that is or isn't in the book does not factor in. You're absolutely right. Does it rain in some deserts? Yes. Okay, yeah, it can I thought. absolutely rain in the desert. It just doesn't rain on Arrakis. Until now! Wow. What a song to play us off. I, I don't even know where to fucking start. Not with me. Oh, you're not supposed to start. I'm supposed me to and end it. can start. Yep. Zero. Zero. <laughs> it's so bad. This movie is terrible. I'm surprised, if I could just jump yeah. in real quick. I'm surprised you guys gave it zeros and gave it no positive. There's no good things in this movie. Uh, the pause, the things that I like are Duncan like. Duncan Idaho. I laughed at parts that were intentionally funny, and ah, uh, some of it doesn't look like shit. Like that's not enough. There's nothing here. This movie. The story. This movie is, just butchers. The story and pacing is just so grossly bad. This really just expands on every issue the book has with its really bad pacing and it's like just in the background being like oh by the way this happened because i have a theory about this book i think really what frank hebert wanted to do was make like three books maybe four but he couldn't guarantee that this book would sell well enough for them to give him a sequel yeah so he just compiled it all into one book i've been talking to these two about it because i've been reading the book um I think it should have been more than one book. I think the book has god-awful pacing for as much as I loved it. But this movie takes the bad pacing and cuts out all of the interesting stuff it has to say about prophecy and religion and humans' just abilities to survive and indigenous people versus in outsiders and invaders. And just it just butchers. It butchers everything. And I feel like half of this movie was made for people who have read the book because they don't explain shit. Yeah. But the people who've read the book, like myself, hate this fucking movie, which I do. Zero. Sure, I, the sandworms look cool. Zero. I can't excuse. This is the maybe the worst paced film I've ever watched. It's legitimately too quick and too slow at the same time. And I don't know how. It's just meandering. Like, when I watch the beginning of the movie, they give you so much shit all at once. And then it stops being interesting for 30 minutes. And then it goes back to doing too much shit. And then it stops again for 45 minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck's the point? I don't get anything. I didn't get anything from watching this movie. Like, Paul exists. He didn't even feel like the main character. There's nothing to Paul. Paul in the books is like this, like, smart guy who can read a room and he manipulates people. Paul is very manipulative in the books and he's smart and he figures stuff out. And he has moments where he just breaks down and freaks out. And they're some of the best parts of the book. And he does things of his own volition because he's trying to force himself to be the chosen one of the prophecy. Because he's kind of trying to manipulate the Fremen into giving him his planet back. Not out of obligation to the Fremen, but as revenge. And that's really fucking interesting. Jake. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah, sure. All right. Ten. No, I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> this is a terrible movie. But I honestly don't put... Uh, not 0% blame, but I put very little blame on David Lynch. When I've, like, I've mentioned it during the commentary, but the cut he had was four fucking hours long, and he wanted to make a movie almost three hours, kind of like Zack Snyder does his league a little bit, but the studio kept pushing for two hours. He walked from the project. It feels very much like the backstory to this movie definitely happened because it feels like a movie made for no one, by a collection of people that aren't creative people. And don't understand Dune. Yep. It feels like, oh, well, we got to speed run all of the exposition scenes, even though they're really long and elaborate and essential, but also really focus on the scenes that we think people will like, which is really long desert walks, really weird set design, and I love me some set design. I yeah. think the set design in this movie was actually really, really well done. I love the makeup. I'm 50-50 on the costumes. I really, really like the production value. I hate the costumes. Yeah, fair enough. Everything behind this movie as far as the production, I think 
it's hard to describe, but I feel like David Lynch had some kind of vision to adapt this book to the screen. And I think it would have been not spectacular, but really, really solid. And I think it could have, it, it's so. I think mm, for its. I think the term you're looking for is good at all. It's, I think for its time, it would have been seen as a good adaptation. But the second Denny Villeneuve's version came on, it would have blown it out of the water. I think it's really tough because I, I totally see why Lynch would walk. Like if I were Lynch. And this is the version of the movie the studio is forcing me to edit and release. And I watch this cut. I'm gone. Like, I'm not there anymore. If they're not going to let me change it. Ah, it's me, Alan Smithy. If they're not going to let me sit down and improve this piece of shit at all, I'm out. Like, there's no fucking way. And look at the sandworms. Look how beautiful and gorgeous and really massively crafted and represented they were on screen until the weird end scene. But... Really, just the way that they moved, the way that they, like, opened their little three-pronged faces, the final fight at the end notwithstanding, it feels inspired. It feels like someone read the book and went, wow, I'm going to put this on screen, and they did. And there's so many scenes like that that feel ripped straight from imagination put onto a screen. And that's why it really pains me that everything surrounding those wonderful scenes is vomit. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's It's tough. Mud, you were talking about the pacing of the book. You kept talking about how chapters were adapted out of order in this version of the movie. Yep. It went like three, four, five, six. It three, four, two. five, six at the same time. Yep, all at the same chapter time in one. one scene. And then throw chapter one in there, you know, mix it up. The book, as you've mentioned, is already badly paced. Mm-hmm. This has to be a case of the studio giving a shit at all about the book, watching it and going, oh, let's rearrange all this shit so we can try and make it a little more palatable for a big, dumb American audience. Let's try and use voiceover dialogue. Let's speed run all the scenes we're missing or that we don't like at all. There's so much happening in this. I'm staring at this movie. I've run the gambit on emotions. I'm awe-inspired. I'm happy. I'm depressed. I'm shocked. I'm disgusted. And a lot of that is not the movie's intention. So, yeah, none of it, I'd argue. It's hard to give it a score at all, but if I were forced to, I would go three. Wow, that is high. I would say this movie is a zero with flashes of eights and nines of a movie in here. It's That's why, like, I don't know how to rate this out of ten. So, wow, it's tough. It's really tough. I would not wow. recommend this to anyone unless you were interested in, like, the behind-the-scenes production value I just, at all. I knew this movie was going to insult me the moment Duncan died. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duncan survives for a little bit longer in the book. There's also... Character development happens, like, Never. partially. Never. No, like Never! Oh, my God! I don't know anything about these characters. They no, never I mean, change! I mean, no, I, I would argue there are scenes where characters start to evolve, and then the next scene, they're not evolved anymore. They've gone back. They've regressed. Like, Paul, a lot of times, he starts to learn something, and then the next scene, he goes back to doing his dumb I, shit. I think my best example, and, and don't laugh, but I'm going to say, Thufer... Gets captured by the Harkonnens. And, you know, they're like, oh, here's your blood key or whatever. You work for us now. In the books, the only reason Thufur does that is because, A, he thinks Jessica betrayed Paul, not Dr. Yue. And, B, is trying to kill the Harkonnens. And he just never shows up again in the movie. I think he's in, like, one scene in the background. And it just makes me want to kill myself. There's a lot happening. I would be out of my chair excited flabbergasted if they if they announced some kind of snyder cut for this dune where they let lynch do it but they've offered it and he doesn't want it he doesn't want it because he's (laughs) just so done with the project he's so done i don't i don't don't blame him at all there's no push for it the same way there was a push for the snyder cut i feel like if we had social media in the 80s there'd be a push for release the lynch cut and you know what dune cut on top of this this is like his second or third movie he's an established director i fucking respect him for walking any director who's up and coming would have taken this project and been their bitch and let anything happen just to get his he name would have out been there. A real Alex Kurtzman. Real Alex Kurtzman about it, but he chose not to be an Alex Kurtzman. He chose to be a David Lynch, and honestly, that makes me want to watch more of his movies to see what he wants to do on screen, not be tampered with by this big dumb studio. His version of the movie was probably Dune. This is not Dune. Yeah, this I is... bet. I wonder how faithful that four-hour or three-hour cut would be, would have been to the book. We'll never know. We'll never know. We literally will never know. He will never want to do it. Ian. Ah, I don't even know how I'm going to pitch my movie to you guys. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't know a lot about it. I was listening to a podcast, like a hockey podcast. They quoted the movie and said, didn't he, didn't man in the movie win an Oscar even though he was only in the movie for eight minutes? And I'm like, no way. So I looked, I looked it up. He did not. 
but someone else in the movie did. And the more I looked into it, I'm like, wait, this cast is this cast is bitching. And it sounds interesting. So how what Arthur Miller produ- things are you familiar with? Arthur Miller? Death of a salesman? Death of a salesman. He did the crucible. Not yep. important. Death of a salesman. Yep. Um this has ties to Death of a Salesman kind of, because it's kind of like a parodical thing. A little bit of the cast and the director. The director directed both Fifty Shades of Grey sequels. <laughs> um, that's the only like notable things he's ever directed. Is this a recent movie? No. Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades Freed. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, Christ. But okay. this includes a couple of quality content, guys, that we're, uh, we're very, very happy and familiar with. Including Jonathan Price. Okay. And uh, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, what? So it's called Glen Gary Glen Ross, and that's what we're watching. I've heard of this movie. I've never heard of it. What's the genre? Isn't Alec Baldwin in it? Too? Yes, that's the who they were talking about. He's only in it for like eight minutes. Has the best scene in the movie. Yes, I know. Okay, yeah, I've yeah. heard of Glen Gary Glen Ross. Yeah. What the fuck? I. It's Al Pacino. Yeah, like the cast slaps. <laughs> 